Hey y'all, Nate here again, and today after lots of promising, I finally have a review of the Nikon D5000. So the D5000, um, this particular D5000 is not mine. Um, I don't own a D5000, period. This is actually, um, I'm borrowing this from my school, um, who bought this camera for yearbook uh, upon my recommendation. And I'm just going to run through it today uh, for your benefit, but also for the benefit of the kids on my yearbook. Um, so they can uh, pick up this camera and follow along with these videos and learn how to use it so they can take great shots for the school. Okay, so the D5000 um, replaces the Nikon D60 um, as Nikon's second camera model uh, in their range of cameras. So, first thing we notice about the D5000 is it's a pretty small body. It's in fact pretty much identical to my old Nikon D40X I have here. Um, there are a few differences. Um, if we look on the tops, here we can see that, oh, water's down. We can see that the D5000 has a couple more notches on here, in particular the scene mode, which I'll get into, whereas the uh, D40X does not. However, where we can see the biggest difference is if we flip the cameras around to the back, where we can see the 2.5 inch LCD screen of the D40X and rather interesting little thing here on the back of the D5000. So what exactly is this? Well, I'll show you. You go up here, click, flip, and there's your LCD screen for the D5000. Now, if we look at this LCD screen, we say, oh wow, look how big it is. It looks almost as big as the LCD screen here on my D90. So you can see they look to be about the same size. Well, sorry to disappoint you, but if I turn on the D5000 here, and I insert an SD card because I've just taken mine out, and we pull up a picture, we can see there's our picture, but it doesn't take up the entire screen. Indeed, the screen on the back of the D5000 is about the same size as the screen on the D40X, which frankly I find a little disappointing, um, especially from coming from this big old monster here of the D90, where it has this giant LCD screen here, um, and a very high density, high res screen too. Um, that's the other thing you will not find in the D5000, um, is that the screen is very, very low resolution. I mean, it's it's good enough, but it's by no means what you get with the D90 or more expensive cameras. Okay, so back to the things that the D5000 does. If we put it up here again against the D40X, we will see that the D40X has the review button, menu button, zoom in, zoom out, multi-purpose info button right there at the bottom. And then it's got a delete button, whoop, delete button right there for photos and your command wheel. Now, oh, and it also has the AEL AFL lock button right up there. But if oh. we go to the back of the D5000, here things are just a little bit different. Okay, we have the dedicated info button now right here on the bottom. We have the zoom in button, we have the zoom out button right here, menu button and playback button. But the delete button has been moved from down here to up here. And we can see why if we take a little closer look at where it should be we can see a microphone right there. That's because if we come up here, the D5000 has a live view. Okay, and of course, just like the, um, the D90, um, the D5000 can record video. As we can see, as I've just done up there, it is now recording video. Now, I've been beating up on the D5000's uh, little LCD screen here, as I mentioned a few moments ago. However, there is one thing, honestly, that I really do like about it. If I turn the camera on here and go to live view, for instance, I can take this LCD screen and flip it pretty much any how, where I want. And, I mean, it may seem like a bit of a gimmick, but honestly, if I'm 
if, if I was were just a casual shooter who kind of did stuff for fun, this is great to have. I mean, you don't, you don't see this on any other Nikon DSLR. Um, I believe the uh, P90's screen can do something similar to this, but this really is nice. Another thing I really like about the D5000 is that since it's uh, essentially the same body, as uh, the D40X that I have in smaller cameras of its of its kind, it's very light, um, and it's also got a really light lens attached to it. Um, this is the 18 to 55 VR lens, which I'll get into in a few minutes here. But this is a very light little combination right here. Um, and honestly, don't get me wrong. I love my D90. I love my big old battery grip, and I love my big old heavy f 2.8 lenses. But they're heavy. I mean, they're, they're so much trouble to lug around everywhere. I mean, this is... I could walk around all stinking day with this thing either in my hand or around my neck, and I'd never get tired because it's small, it's light, and it packs a lot of punch. Um, this camera has the guts of the D90, so it's got the megapixels. It's got the noise cap uh, ISO capabilities, the noise reduction. It's got all the technical bells and whistles of the D5000 just in a in a smaller sort of package. Now, the price you pay for having a D90 in the lightweight body of a D40 is that it is an extremely fiddly little camera as well. By that, I mean to change any settings, you have to go down here, click the info button, click the info button again, and choose between, let's run, run them through here, okay? We have flash, right there, uh, exposure, compensation, flash value, uh, picture controls, bracketing, ADL, metering, uh, autofocus area mode, autofocus drive mode, um, frame, uh, frame count mode, single shoot, um, continuous shoot, that kind of thing, ISO, white balance, quality size, and quality itself. Um, by that, I mean, excuse me, I mean format. Um, fine, raw, JPEG, this, that, and the other. Um, so it's, it's a lot more difficult to do anything you need to do um, in this camera for that reason. And in addition, uh, it only has the one scroll wheel right here. It doesn't have one up front here like the D90 does. And it doesn't have the top LCD screen here. So whenever you want to change your shutter speed, uh, stick it on manual here. You've got to look through here, and you've got to look for the little, okay, I'm at 1 20th second right now, and then click 125, 130, 40, 50, 60, 80, 125, what have you. And then, of course, to change your aperture, you have to press the little aperture button right there, hold it down, then go back F8, F9, F10, F11, F13, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, back down as far as, if I'm zoomed out, F3.5. When you first buy your D5000, it'll come from uh, the factory preset so that whenever you're not actively taking a picture, it'll flash that menu up on the screen permanently. Now, let me tell you something. That's going to kill your battery before you can even think. So what you got to do is you got to go into menu here, and you've got to go to auto information display here under the setup menu, and then just turn it off for both of them. Because let's be honest, how much trouble is it really to go down here and hit that button to bring it up? Okay, it's not that much trouble at all, obviously. Um, and by doing that, you will save a lot of battery life, and therefore you'll save yourself a lot of shots. Um, that you'll be able to make with that, frankly, very draining uh, setting turned off.